America voted, and Donald Trump won. But he wasn't their candidate, so now these protesters are angry. Protest from New York to Philadelphia to Chicago and Los Angeles. Something horrific and unbelievable has happened. And with a lot of Clinton supporters still in shock, Donald Trump today makes his first trip to the White House as the new president-elect. And he's promising to be a president for all Americans. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. And President Obama also called for Americans to come together. It is no secret that the president-elect and I have some pretty significant differences. We are now all rooting for his success in uniting and leading the country. Although many world leaders also well, expressed support for Trump, Europeans who watched the election closely and expected a certain Clinton victory were still trying to come to grips with the result. France's socialist president, Francois Hollande, said Trump's victory opens a period of uncertainty. Much more certain is Trump's agenda for his first 100 days. The top order of business is to repeal and replace Obamacare. Believe me, we'll get rid of that. I've been saying it for years. Trump has also promised middle-class families a 35% tax cut. The Tax Foundation, which has looked at the plan, said it would actually cut taxes for several income levels. And that's what they can use, and that money will go back into the economy. Also, border security. And Trump has vowed to make it a lot tougher for persons from terror-related countries to enter the U.S. Radical. Islamic terror is right around the corner. We have to be so tough, so smart, so vigilant. Trump is also eager to fill that seat on the Supreme Court that has been vacant since February with a conservative justice and could get chances to appoint more justices. Wall Street quickly got used to the idea of a Trump presidency after an initial sell-off stocks posted strong gains. President-elect Trump has a lot on his plate and a lot to talk about when he meets everybody. with President Obama. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, I want to say that uh, the Trump policies in terms of tax cuts and taking away the terrific burden of administrative overhead that is costing our economy about $3 trillion a year, when those things are, are taken off and when the taxes are lowered, the stock market should just take off like a like a rocket, and uh, I think people have sold off. They've sold off too early. Well, our CBN News White House correspondent Jennifer Wishon Wish is with us right now. Jennifer, uh, I know it's a little early for that meeting, but what do you think the president and uh, the president-elect are going to be talking about? Well, Pat, can, wouldn't you just love to be a fly on the wall in the Oval <laughs> Office this morning? Uh, President Obama is going to welcome uh, a successor he never, ever in a million years could have imagined. Um, but, you know, today, President Obama, you know, Donald Trump has made it clear that in his first hundred days, he is going to begin unraveling the Obama presidency. And so today, President Obama is going to begin a new campaign, and that is the campaign for his legacy. Uh, he is going to become lobbyist in chief, lobbying his successor, trying to convince him not to completely undo everything he's worked for these past eight years. Well, it looks like to me that Trump's going to have to do that. I mean, uh, for example, uh, uh, the, he's put at the top of his agenda is the signature piece of legislation of the Obama administration, what is the health care. They call it the Affordable Health Act. It was known as Obamacare. And uh, Mitch McConnell is also talking about repealing it. What do you hear? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this is a huge opportunity for Republicans who've really been in the wilderness uh, when it comes to having a partner uh, here at the White House. And so we know that Republicans on Capitol Hill desperately want to do away with Obamacare. Donald Trump wants to do away with Obamacare. So it looks like that is definitely going to happen very soon. We've also heard the Senate Majority Leader say he wants to work with the president-elect on many other issues, border security. He wants to get some sort of comprehensive tax reform passed. Um, he also wants to do away with some of these onerous uh, EPA regulations that we've heard businesses complain so much about. And Pat, you know, kind of the crown jewel of their partnership, if you will, in the coming months is going to be Senate Republicans working to confirm uh, Donald Trump's first nominee to the Supreme Courts. 
well, we look like he's promised pro-life, and he's got a slate of candidates. You remember when he was out there uh, in the, the Springfield area and made that wonderful speech? He, he said, I'm going to actually put people on the court from the list that I've already vetted, and they've all been cleared through the Federalist Society. So uh, it's a question of whether uh, Mitch McConnell is willing to use the nuclear option. Have you heard anything about any of that? Well, I mean, that, that's yet to be seen. Uh, and, you know, of course, the, the politics here at the White House are always different from the politics on the Hill. You know, uh, Pat, you know well that self-preservation here in Washington is very important to people, uh, especially members of Congress. So um, we'll see. But, I mean, it is encouraging to see that Republicans on the Hill want to work with the new president because, of course, during the campaigns, we saw them, sh you know, keep their distance a little bit from their mm -hmm. nominees. So uh, this is, a, a, I guess, a a good first sign. Jennifer, keep it up. We want your uh, eyes open, your ear to the ground. <laughs> Tell us what's going on. Absolutely. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's just amazing because up to this point, regardless of what the Republicans in Congress do, they knew that the, uh, Obama was going to veto anything they did. So they, they were stymied. Now they've got a, the first time in decades the Republicans have control of the House control of the Senate, control of the White House. The, the thing that it seems like to me they're going to have to do, however, before anything's too far along, they're going to have to somehow change the civil, uh, the act dealing with the civil service, because uh, as long as that's in place, it's almost impossible to clean out the Veterans Administration, for example, because you can't fire these guys, and it's hard to give them merit raises. So we need a situation where you can give the good ones merit raises and help them, and the ones that are not performing, you can uh, give a, a pink slip to send them out into the private sector. Uh, that's got to be done, and I'm not sure that uh, they're prepared to do that, but uh, we, uh, with having the president both houses of Congress, that's going to be a, a top on the agenda before they can get the rest of it done. Well, with us now from New York is a, a tremendous uh, financial expert, Stephen Moore. He's an economist with the Freedom Works, and he was an advisor to the Trump campaign. And uh, Steve, the economy was the top issue for millions of voters. Trump talks about cutting taxes. What do you expect that he'll do, uh, like, order of priority? What, what goes number one, two, three, four, five? Well, Pat, great to be with you again. By the way, I want to salute you for your service to our country. I appreciate you, that. By the way, a shout out to my dad. He's 93, so fought in World War uh, II. Great, great American. And all, yeah. the, all the great servicemen, just want to salute them for making yeah, our, yeah, our country safe. Um, so, um, a couple of things. Look, I believe that right out of the gate, uh, Donald Trump can do some very significant things. You mentioned Obamacare. You know, Obamacare was designed to fail. <laughs> uh, even liberals, you know, in, in private will admit that they knew the thing was going to fail. They were hoping that they would be able to uh, to move towards a government run health care system. What we aim to do with our uh, health care overhaul, and by the way, we're going to cover everybody. Pat. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to have health insurance, but we're going to give people way more options. There's going to be way more competition. If you live in Virginia, Pat, you could buy a health care plan in Utah or Iowa. That gives you way more choices. We're going to uh, uh, do medical malpractice uh, insurance reform to lower costs. We believe we can provide everybody with better care than they're getting under Obamacare. <clears throat> Cut the cost by 30 percent. And, and yes, Pat, under our plan, you do get to keep your doctor. You do get to keep your hospital. You get you keep your health care uh, service provider. And that, that is a big deal because I think Obamacare was a major reason that Donald Trump won this election. Well, of course, when they raised the premium so much, double the ones in Arizona yeah. were just over 100%. Uh, but let me ask you, you, you said this, and I think it's important to bring it out. It was designed to fail. The reason being what? It created a death spiral in the insurance market. So what happened, Pat, uh, and this has happened over the last uh, several years, and Obama, uh, the only thing that surprised me about Obamacare is that it's, it's imploded so quickly. I didn't, even I didn't think this would get, happen so quickly. And what's happened is healthy people have not signed up for the insurance under uh, Obamacare, and sick people, I mean, you could literally be on your way in an ambulance to the hospital and sign up for insurance. So people weren't signing up till they got sick. That's not insurance. We're going to repair the, uh, the market. And by the way, this is one of the reasons, it's not just about healthcare, Pat. 
You know, the average American has not seen a pay raise now in 10 years. In fact, the average American family is a little bit poorer today than they were 10 years ago when you take into account inflation. And one of the reasons people aren't seeing pay raises is because businesses have to pay so much for their uh, for the health care. And as they pay more for health care, they don't have enough money left over to give people raises. We think by bringing down these health care costs, that will put more money into the pockets of American families and consumers uh, so they can pay their bills. If Hillary had gotten in, she wanted a single payer. She wanted the government you to be it. in charge of it, like Canada. No question. That's right. Uh, I don't yeah, know. You no know, question. Steve, these, these kids out there, did you see where these, these college students, they want a day off to cry? I mean, <laughs> to, did you I see did. that? To cry. Yeah, gr grief counts. <laughs> I think that was University of Virginia, right down the road oh, where you no, are. No, it couldn't Pat. be. Oh, no, not for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, yeah, I, I, I've, I've they need grief counseling. <laughs> I did see that. And by the way, I was out. I was at Fox News yesterday outside the building on Sixth Avenue. I'm in on Fifth Avenue here at your studio. Uh, and they closed these protesters closed off Sixth Avenue, Fifth Avenue during the middle of rush hour where people couldn't get home. And, you know, they were saying, oh, this is an Ill illegitimate election and Trump is not fit to serve. And I said, wait a minute to these kids. And most of them were millennials, you know, who've never had anybody say no to them in their whole life. I said, we just had an election. You know, the voters spoke. You may not like the outcome, but that's the way our democratic system works. But I'm afraid, Pat, and I'm going to make this prediction. I hope I am wrong about this. I think you're going to see more of these protests over the next uh, several yeah. months, and I think they're going to get, become more heated because the left is in a, in a state of denial right now about what happened on Tuesday night. Well, you have said, and I think it's very interesting, that the Republican Party may well morph into the party of the working class, the blue-collar yes. workers who've been had it in the neck from all the things that are going, and the fat cats on the coast, the, the Silicon Valley types, um, yeah. will be the Democrats, and so it'll be the party of the rich versus the party of the working people. Is that the way it's going to work out? I think it might. I mean, look, Donald Trump did something so amazing on Tuesday night, and I admire him so much for this. And I, I traveled around the country a bit with him and did a lot of, uh, you know, uh, campaign visits on my own. And just meeting these these uh, folks in towns like York, Pennsylvania, and Rockford, Illinois, and Newark, New Jersey, and Cleveland, and people have really been left behind, and they haven't been listened to. And I think, uh, Donald, one of the most important things that Donald Trump said during this whole campaign, remember during his convention speech, he said, mm -hmm. for all all those Americans out there in middle America who feel like Washington is not attentive to you and they're not listening to your concerns, he said, I will be your voice. And I predict, uh, uh, you know, Pat, just as you're the voice for so many people in this country uh, who are evangelical Christians, if Donald Trump can continue to fight for these working class Americans, he will be a successful president. All right. One last question. I, I know yeah. the president has, I've heard as many as 2,600 regulations ready to dump <laughs> in the hopper yeah. <laughs> uh, by executive order. These things are job killers. Uh, and, and Donald Trump yeah. told me in an interview that people really were more concerned about the regulations than they are about the high taxes. That's right. And you know, I, when my conversations with Donald Trump, I said, Donald, when you are elected president, and I'm one of your economic advisors. The day you enter the White House and the first hour you are in the Oval Office, we're going to put a stack of executive orders on your desk and you're going to sign them. And these are the, you know, repealing a lot of Obama's illegal executive orders. And I'll tell you what's going to be near the top of that list. And it's mm -hmm. something that's near and dear to people who live in Virginia like you and I do. You know, so many tens of thousands of coal miners have been put out of business. As you know, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia is a coal producing state. Yeah. We're going to put those people back in their jobs, Pat. They want their jobs back. That's one of the reasons uh, Donald Trump won. And we're going to repeal that power plant bill and get those people in the jobs where they belong. Steve, one last thing is, you know, this nicey, nicey stuff, let's all be sweet and let's sing come by ya. But the truth is, the people wanted a change, and change is going to mean you've got to get some people out of office and put other people in office and policies have got to change. And that means you've got to be tough. Is that the way you look at it? Is that the way Trump's going to go after it? 
Well, he has to be tough. He has to have stick to itiveness and, and really be single minded about getting this done. But I believe, Pat, what he has to do is reach across the aisle low to Democrats in working class towns and say, look, you're you represent the people who voted for me. Let's get together. Let's get this done for the good of the country. I think where Barack Obama failed, frankly, mm -hmm. is that he never really reached across the table of the Republicans. Remember when he did his Obamacare and he did his huge eight hundred billion dollar stimulus and all these other measures. He didn't do it. Not with a single Republican vote. Yeah. I want to do it, and I think Donald Trump agrees, where we get dozens and dozens of Democrats. That's the way Ronald Reagan did it. You remember oh, yeah. when we did the yeah. tax cut in 1981, we got something like 75 Democrats in the House to vote for that. Um, last thing, I, 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 <laughs> so many good, uh, big stimulus public works program, that's a Democrat initiative, but Trump wants to do that. Is that going to be top on the agenda? I mean, high on the agenda? Well, I think you could see a deal you know, that would happen. This would be a bipartisan thing where we do the business tax cut that's going to bring so many of these jobs back to the United States. Uh -huh. And then you have what we call the repatriation. You bring the capital back. You charge those companies 10 yeah. percent. We think that's going to raise one hundred and fifty billion dollars. And how about this, Pat? We use that one hundred and fifty billion dollars to rebuild our infrastructure. I love would it. Would you go along with that? <laughs> All right. Makes business sense. Steve, thank you so much. Come back. So